Hello and welcome to a day of testing here at Dunster House. Today I'm not here to show you about greenhouses, I'm here to show you about the different types of glazing material that are available across the market. Now, first of all, we've got 4mm toughened glass, which is what we use. We've also got 4mm float glass, which is untoughened. And representing the plastics, we've got acrylic and styrene. But before I actually go on to doing the test proper, I will just show you that actually just fitting these materials, I've managed to scratch them without meaning to do so. So here you can see scratch marks where my hammer has gone backwards and forwards, knocking the nail in to hold that piece of styrene in place. And again here, scratch marks again, this is just the surface of my hammer as I was knocking the nail in. Uh, so I've already scratched the materials without even meaning to. So the first thing that I'm looking to illustrate is how easily or otherwise these different surfaces scratch. Uh, all I've got with me is a simple little Brillo pad. It's nothing particularly special. It's a couple of pence, not very expensive. And it's not particularly scratchy either. You know, it's not wire wall or anything like that. You can do this to your hands all day long and it's not ever going to cut you. So as I say, it's not particularly abrasive. If I do that to the glass, you can see that nothing really is happening at all. And you, know, you can see me just as clearly now, I'm sure, as you could before I did it. Moving on to the float glass, the same's going to apply. I can scratch it as much as I want to with this type of Brillo pad and nothing really happens. Moving on to the acrylic now, if I try and scratch that surface, you can see that very quickly it's starting to get little scratch marks on it. And within the space of just a few seconds, it's becoming quite opaque. Now, the purpose of this is just, I'll stand to one side so you can see me again. The purpose of this is so that you can see the difference that just airborne particles are going to cause to the material over time. And in the space of just a few weeks or months even, you'll find that with the plastic surfaces, they're going to scratch and they're going to cloud up very quickly indeed. I'll try the same on the styrene. And I'll move across so you can see me. And once again, you can see just how quickly that clouds up. And the evidence is there on the Brillo pad that the plastic has actually been removed and left on the surface of the Brillo pad. So we're now going to be testing the strength of the different materials. As you can see, I've got four lovely bricks lined up here, all hanging on the same length of rope. They're all tied in the same manner to the top brackets here, and all of the brackets are orientated to make sure that they swing particularly smoothly. I've also got a guide wire above my head to make sure when I'm lifting them back, I'm lifting them to the same point each time to make sure that I'm imparting the same amount of force onto the material when I let go. The other things to note are that I'm wearing safety goggles. I'm also wearing safety glass gloves. Uh, I've also put a load of plastic sheeting down outside because I'm pretty sure I'm going to be smashing some glass right now and this is certainly not something you should be trying at home. So, first up is my 4mm toughened glass. If I move my brick back, get it to the guide wire, let go. It makes a heck of a noise, but it doesn't break. Moving on to the 4mm float glass, again back to the guide wire, let go. And I'm glad I moved away. And as you can see, when it did break, it has broken into particularly sharp shards which have fallen all over the place, which obviously isn't very good if you're a kid who's kicked a football into it and you're running up to retrieve your football. Moving on to the plastics, we've got acrylic first. So again, I should lift it up to the guide wire. I'm not entirely sure if this will break or not, but we shall find out. Well, it actually went through very easily. So that's acrylic out of the question, and we're moving on to styrene as well. Up to the guide wire again, let go. And once again, straight through. So as you can see, toughened glass is by far the better choice when it comes to strength. So having proof that the toughened glass is the strongest out of the materials, which was what we were expecting, I do also want to show the difference between what happens when toughened glass does actually break compared to what happens when float glass breaks. As you can see, the float glass is very large shards which are particularly sharp, 
um, and the toughened glass should be breaking somewhat differently. Now, as we know, if I lift it up and drop it, it's not going to break. So let's actually put a bit of force into it this time and see if I can break it. Yep, still not breaking. Let's try again. Okay, well, that wasn't the result I was expecting because I actually managed to knock the beading out before I broke the glass. Uh, and I actually ripped the timber a little bit as well, in fact. So it does go to show just how strong it is, um, but in order to show you what broken glass looks like when it's toughened, I suppose I'm going to have to do it on the floor. So I'm not looking to give any would-be thieves any ideas on how to smash toughened glass, so I'll ask the camera to pan over in that direction whilst I have a go at smashing this one. So there you go. You can see obviously the difference when toughened glass smashes compared to when normal float glass smashes. Well actually that's a bit of perspex but it looks very much like the glass. This is a piece of float glass which has got razor sharp edges to it whereas toughened glass when it breaks crumbles up. Now I wouldn't necessarily want to go handling these without glass gloves on because they can be a little bit sharp as well but it is a better option, certainly. So the very last thing that I wanted to show you before I finish this video is the difference in the flexibilities of the materials. In my right hand here, I have a plastic. This happens to be an obscure acrylic. Uh, and in my left hand, I have toughened glass. This is typical of the plastics. I just happen not to use this particular one because obviously obscure isn't going to show the Brillo pad doing its, its work very well. Uh, but as I bought it, I did think to myself, well, I can use it very much to show you just how flexible plastic is. And so hopefully it illustrates that point very well. Glass, on the other hand, is a far more rigid material. So if I try and shake that, I shan't slap my hands against it because that makes a noise as well. You can see it's a lot more rigid. Also, because this is toughened glass, before it goes through the toughening plant, they actually harass the edges, which means polish the edges, so that you can actually manhandle toughened glass a lot more easily and safely than you can with normal float glass, which will have otherwise razor sharp edges down the side. It is worth pointing out that you should always handle glass with glass gloves. I shouldn't actually be doing this because it is possible that the factory has missed an edge when they've been looking to polish all the different edges. But in the main, it does mean that toughened glass is a far better glass and a far safer glass to handle than float glass as well. So with that information and with the other knowledge that we've gained from this video, hopefully it means that your life is a lot easier in choosing the right glazing material for you. Thank you.